Welcome to Inform Me, a social media conversation for April 10, 2014. I'm Nate Manahan. And I'm Dustin Pickle. We're going to take all the social media stories we can find, get them down to seven to ten stories, and we're going to start out with heart beating. Da, da, da. I don't know what that has to do with social media, but we'll talk about it for a second. Yeah, we're going to talk about all kinds of Twitter stuff, their new profiles, a bunch of stories on Twitter this week. We're going to talk about Facebook, we're going to talk about Yelp, we're going to talk about all kinds of social media. We'll have a couple videos and then the infographic of the week, all here on Inform Me, a social media conversation. Keep watching. Welcome back to another Informe show. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, man, spring, it finally. Is, oh my gosh, 60 Sun. degrees outside. I know, there, there's, there's a guy, uh, my office made Paul Kinn, yeah. in his shorts today. We're, you know, feeling a little relaxed here in northern Indiana. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Finally Life a breath of fresh air and uh, the golf course. I've been on the golf course like four times already. Changes my life every spring when it rolls yeah. around and I can get out there and be outside. It's wonderful. So if you have great weather where you are too, we're finally catching up. If you're like in California or Florida, we're catching up with you guys. Um, not it's quite that, the same, but we're catching up. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, but a lot of times I've, people that I follow, always, they call this patio weather, where you can finally get out on your patio. We have here, just actually just off the studio here, we have a little patio, and mm -hmm. I've been thinking it would be nice to be able to have some meetings out there. Here yeah, soon absolutely. And just get outside and not, yeah. So the long, hard, cold winter is over. Yep. We are positive, thinking, good thoughts. And this week, the big news story across technology is Heartbleed. Which doesn't sound positive in any way, shape, no. or form. And we're not going to uh, <laughs> try to discuss this at all because we're not the tech heads that we uh, play on TV. Uh, what we are <laughs> is realizing that this is a big story when it comes to social media. And we yeah. link up a Recode article here. Um, if you want to learn more about what Heartbleed is, you've probably found it. It's probably in the news. Um, I think one of the favorite people I like to follow is a guy named Steve Gibson, and he does a podcast called Security Now. Google that. You'll find it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's what I listened to and learned a lot. Uh, but basically it's this. <laughs> Let's find some <laughs> safety and security. And Twitter came out and said, hey, we don't need to change our passwords. I'm thinking about changing my Twitter password because that always makes me a little nervous. I change And I change it somewhat regularly yeah, anyways. Yeah, sure. And you should. Um, for but, security. Yeah, but yeah. It's a big deal, but yeah. social media, it kind of took over. It was definitely, uh, it was the trending topic on Facebook and Twitter yesterday mm -hmm. and the last two days. Yeah, yeah. real interesting. So uh, go and learn about it. Uh, find out if you need to change your, your, your passwords at all on any of your social networks. Twitter says you're safe, but like you said, it might just be a good idea to change your password anyways. Yeah. Um, and we recommend doing that, you know, every, you know, five, six months, just every once in a while. Yeah, Keep make it fresh. a unique password. Yeah. There's things like don't use password as password. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and that's amazing. Every time I see those stats, what percentage of people actually do that? And I'm like, and if you're a brand, <laughs> Don't make something so easily hackable and because somebody's just going to play with you and they're going to yep. screw with you and it can hurt you. And, you know, if it happens to McDonald's and it happens, you know, there's yeah. the major big brands are having that happen, then it can certainly happen to you. So do everything you can to protect yourself. Yeah. Now, Twitter's safe. Twitter's safe. And Twitter has several news stories out this week. Yeah, we're all about Twitter this week. Oh, it's we kind are. of fun. Um, the new profile. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think... Man, I've talked to a couple guys that are on the social media team um, here at PayPro Media, uh, and I've got a couple mixed reviews on it. I've got some, one of the guys particularly was saying, you know, this is what Twitter was missing. They needed something visual, something big, you know, like for people to land, when they landed on your profile, they it grabbed their attention. Yeah. Like that's, that's what they were missing. And the other, one of the other guys said, you know what? That's why Twitter was different. It wasn't Facebook. It's different. It, it was just text and a feed and it was quick. And now, please don't become Facebook, is yeah. kind of what he was saying. So I think that's the kind of the two sides of the coin that you mostly see. Yeah. I, I, it's, to me, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's very Like, nice. I'm looking at Michelle Obama's, uh, the First Lady's uh, Twitter new profile. She has a new profile. I it was I grabbed Weezer. I saw they were one of them. And, and it's rolling out mm -hmm. gradually over the next several And if you sign up today, I almost thought about creating a new Twitter account just so I could have the new profile to play mm -hmm. with it because I'm looking forward to getting to choose new graphics and yeah. stuff like that. Now it's going to be a pain for those who manage a lot of social media because suddenly all the dimensions change <laughs> and you have to think through how it's going to look. And right. But I like how it looks. I love that you can now pin a, te a tweet to the top. Yes. That is so important because yeah. when you go to a website, which is I think a, you know, a certain amount of people go to a website, see the Twitter logo, click on your and see your Twitter feed, you don't want the first thing to be up there, a response to somebody's complaint yeah, sure. or something. Mm -hmm. So you can control that message. You have something new, you can control that. 
Uh, now, notice that they're curating things now for us, telling us what our best tweets are. We knew this was coming. Yep. We knew this. This is, this is where they're going to make their ad revenue. They're going to force me to pay some money to get my promoted tweets because they're going to start curating the stream. Not so much, they haven't said anything about our news feed, like all of what I'm watching, looking at everyone. Yeah. But they're definitely rising to the top when you go to the profile page. That's not a bad thing. Mm -mm. It's actually good for people to come who come to actually land on your profile. Yeah. Um, for them to see what you guys, what, what yeah. we do the best, but man, uh, it kind of starts to make you think, uh, when is our newsfeed going to start to see those kind of changes? Right. And we've talked about that a lot off camera. Like you said, it's beautiful. And some of the features are just really neat. Um, we linked up our own article here, paper media article. Uh, one of the guys on our, on our content team here, he's super talented, put this together real fast and, um, did some really good research on it too. So, um, Check that out for us and let us know what you think about that. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see Twitter continue to make changes. They obviously uh, realized that they needed some type of update. And it wasn't too long ago that they, they do this regularly, but this was a major change. Yeah. It's, it's going to spread. And I think we'll see what's the next change going to happen. I'm going to guess in a couple of weeks we're going to see a mobile change. Mm, we're going to okay. see their mobile interface change. You heard um, it here first. Yeah, we'll see. That's my prediction. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing by... We'll make it, make it a strong prediction. By April 30th, we will have seen a major update of design and UI to their mobile. All right. So we'll see if that cool. happens. That's just my guess. Um, but then at the same time, Twitter is just becoming more and more, uh, they're just a powerful engine. Yeah. And, uh, and social media is. And we, I linked up an article here on a lady who, and I did not put the article, I, gonna, I should give her credit. Uh, her name is Dr. Hannah, 30 year old archaeologist, uh, who saw the looting going on of nearly 1,100 artifacts in mm -hmm. Egypt. And what I saw here, and we, you can read the article, there's lots of things about uh, why this was important, but when she needed to f recover things that were being taken out of museums and going to be sold and shipped out of the world, where does she turn? She doesn't turn to CNN, nope. she doesn't turn to BBC, she doesn't turn to Al Jazeera or whatever news network, she turns to her 29,000 followers on Twitter and her Facebook followers and yep. she says, help, we need to find this stuff. They haven't yep. found everything, she's re receiving a word. But Twitter, to me, that is a powerful medium and they recovered quite a few things. Yeah, it seems like a really, I mean, a really, uh, first of all, sad story that people are, are kind of stealing and, and, and destroying what seems what is just, you know, human history, yeah. which is just really cool. And, and I've always kind of been into it, especially Egypt. Um, but it's also really cool that her first place to go was, I've got 29,000 Twitter followers. That is a powerful group yeah. of people that you can literally mobilize to go find these right. artifacts. Well, and when you're building your brand, and I don't, I don't know how she, I, they didn't interview her, how she had built 29,000 followers mm -hmm. and how she was interconnected. So I don't know. But when you're building your brand, you never know what you're going to use those followers for. So as you're building your interconnection, as you're interconnecting with people, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, the Gary V, jab, jab, yep. jab. That right hook may be something totally disconnected to you. you know, Know, maybe it's some personal crisis at some point that you need. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a friend who has a pretty good following on Twitter, several thousand followers. His sump pump died in the middle of the night mm -hmm. during a rainy night, and uh, he lives in central Indiana. And he tweeted out, at like, I didn't see it, at like 10 p.m., where do I find a sump pump at the 10 p.m.? Yeah. And he got a ton of replies. <coughs> and he found, you know, and he ended up going to Meyer at the middle of the night because they were open 24 hours. Mm -hmm. He had a sump pump, and it saved, you know, probably some money. Yeah. It's when you have that crisis moment, when you have some opportunity to do and that's why you build community. That's why you don't just broadcast on yeah, Twitter. Absolutely. And it might be for your brand if something happens. You know, you've seen opportunities when things are stolen from businesses and they tweet out and they find the person who stole it. Or, yeah. hey, this car, I've seen it, you know, this car just drove away, just stole this from our store. Help us find it. Yeah. There's this a guy power didn't pay his tab at the at a at a, yes. a, well, a bar. A bar and we read that, that was a few months ago. Yeah, months absolutely. Ago. Um, so powerful. And like, like you said, that's what I really love about social media and why I get into social media so much is because it is about more than that. It's about relationships. It's about engaging with people and me being more of an extrovert than an introvert. I'm kind of in the middle, but more of an extrovert than an introvert. Um, I love building relationships with people and being able to communicate and converse with yeah. them. And then when something happens and they have a need or an I have a need and we just say, hey, I need some help. You've actually got a friend. It's not just somebody who thinks that you tweet the best pictures of bacon. You right. know, it's like, no, this is somebody that I care about, someone that I'm invested in, and someone that I'm really connected to, yeah. and I'm willing to go out there and do what it takes to help them, whether yeah. that's buy their pork tenderloin sandwich, 
or help him find a sub pump in the middle of the night. Right. And it's it's doing this for the long play. It's not mm -hmm. something that happens instantaneous. You don't join Twitter, get the new profile if you join it today. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't join Twitter today and have that community. Right. You join Twitter today and you have that community months from now, yep. years from now. This is not, for brands, this is not a quick fix. You may be able to pay and get a promoted post or even, buy, you know, if, you have, if you're a larger brand, you can buy the promoted mm -hmm. trends. But at the same time, that's not the real value. Right. And you have to realize that there is something you're nurturing and you never know when it might come and be useful. Absolutely. And what you're doing today, those 29,000 followers probably never knew that she was going to come out and say, hey, help us find these things. Yep. And that's what she did. One great article. She won an award. Read the article in New York Times. Um, and realize that Twitter is powerful. And yep. people are, new people are jumping on board all the time. And they certainly focus on television. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. they're competing in a new market, kind of. It's not totally new, but they're trying something new. What is Twitter and CNN. Yeah, check it out. Uh, the Mashable article that we've got here. Uh, we'll link that up for you as well. Uh, CNN and Twitter are partnering to bring 15-second video series yeah. to Twitter. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work. Is it? Uh, as far as I understand, is it just going to be like posted from CNN's Twitter feed? And they're going to have right. a fifteen-second video in, in their Twitter card there. They're going to be able to keep updated on the news, just yeah. like uh, what's that? What's that one on Instagram called? Uh, it what's well, now this news, which now they do news. it on Twitter and right. they do it on Instagram. They do it on Vine. That's right. And they're and they, in fact, this article talks about says now with this ever CNN is taking a page from now this news, which That's are right. short news videos tailored for specific social networks like Instagram and Vine. It, it shows. When CNN says, you know what, we're going to create things that are just, and they're not just reproducing what's, or repurposing what they're using. They're actually creating original content yep. that is new and based on their brand just for Twitter. And that's so nice because anybody who's on, uh, man, I wish I could remember the stat. I was reading an article um, recently, but a large percentage of people find their news on Twitter. It's so much, it's such a lower percentage than it used to be sitting on your couch at night watching the news and then keeping up on the day uh, uh, with what's going on during the day. It's yeah. always on Twitter, it's always on Facebook, it's always on Google Plus and on Instagram. And this is just like, it's great to see a company making a, a big company making a concerted effort to yeah. bring valuable information to all of us through Twitter. Right. It's really awesome. And they realize in order for them to be effective, it needs to be original. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's, I think, it, sometimes we try to repurpose it and we're going to create one thing for, and vomited everywhere yeah and sometimes that is necessary and sometimes it's the fastest way to get all the information out there but also there are there's a best practice mm -hmm. and one of the best practices is create original just for that platform yeah. cnn's realizing that i'm looking forward to seeing it they're going to be announcing it it says this coming week we'll be seeing that in weeks to come i'm sure yeah. we'll cover it as it comes out absolutely so take a page from their book and uh try to make uh, create some things some marketing efforts some uh some content geared specifically for social media, not just what you would do in an email marketing campaign, not just what you would do you know, on a flyer. Do something that's specifically designed for social media. That's a really good piece of information to take from CNN. And yeah, it, Twitter just continues to have new partnerships mm -hmm. and they're focusing on that creating new media and putting it into their streams, whether it's television, news. Uh, but for sure, that's it's relevant. And what we're seeing other companies do is they're focusing on more app development. Now, Facebook, I'm going to throw a new tw another Twitter story out here. Okay, okay? yeah. And it's, I don't even have the link for it. Cool. But I saw it this week. They bought a new, did you see this? They bought a new um, Android app called Cover. I did you didn't see this. See this. Uh, well, let me pull out my phone first. Okay. Because I actually downloaded it. I'd never used it. I remember seeing it come out. But Cover is a boot launcher, and this is... Twitter now owns this, so oh, wow. it makes this show, and it show you know uses the it's and it has different like I can change it to uh, I want to be at home, and it's going to tell me it learns what I'm doing. I've only had it for 24 hours, okay, and I can create my own backdrops, and so it says these are the things you use when you're at home. And I thought, what is Twitter's long play? They bought this, yeah. And this is an app that you put on your Android device. I don't think it'll ever work on iOS because iOS controls their lock screens. Yeah. This only works on Android. What's their What's their strategy? Any Jeez, ideas? I have no I'm totally idea. throwing totally him under the bus. I, I, I'd forgotten about the story and I didn't link it up. It, it wasn't a giant story, but it intrigued me. It's like, what's what are they buying this for? Well, obviously they're going mostly mobile. We got a story later on. We'll get there. The statistics: everybody's on mobile for yeah. just about everything anymore. Um, on also almost all social media networks. Um, if they wow. can, if, it's under, if they control what's on your because what this is is it's controlling before I slide to unlock or do whatever I do mm -hmm. it's controlling what I see and if they control what I see they can put whatever tweets they want they and if they make the mm -hmm. user experience that wow. it's a better source on Android which is you know fifty percent of the smartphone one you know yeah. give or take BlackBerry Windows Phone all that stuff I don't know the exact numbers but they have a huge yeah. you know, plurality of users 
um, and they're saying, let's get that message in front of people. And we're going to, it's like Facebook. They wanted, they wanted to control the whole mobile experience. Yeah. Now Facebook article here, they're forcing your hand. You can no longer just have the Facebook app and yep. do your messages. You Can't actually have, have to have this app. another app, which they've had for a long time. I don't yeah. know how long, but you didn't have to have it. Mm -hmm. I like it. In I like fact, it too. I don't have Facebook on my phone. Hmm. I don't have the Facebook app. I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I, I broke up with you on the Facebook app. It sucked my life. I, I spent too much time on it, so I just took it off and I. Yeah. I, I don't use it, but I do have the Facebook Messenger app because there are a few people, a few clients, few interactive people that only contact me that way. Yeah. And so that's a way for me to interact. It's a great app. It is. And they're forcing the hand. Mobile is where it's at. Twitter, yeah, the Comscore. What, what do you see here? We have another article here yeah, about yeah. the Comscore mobile versus desktop usage. Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier, stats. It's, it just blows your mind. The time, uh, the share of time spent on social networks between your desktop and your mobile device and first of all, let's just get the obvious ones out of the way. Snapchat, Vine, and Instagram are all like 98, 99, or 100% uh, yeah. uh, mobile. Because that's all they yeah, are, really. Right. They were designed for mobile. But the really surprising one is Twitter. 86% is mobile. And that's why I say they're going to roll something out mobile for yeah. sure. They're going to re... Because they just spent a huge amount of time updating their profiles on something that's only 14% of their use case. Yeah. They're, fo they're going to, so they grab this cover. What's their plan? They're going to go mobile. Right. We have to go mobile. Um, we have to think through that. And I, now I was a little surprised on LinkedIn. 74% use on their desktop. Why do you think that is? Uh, LinkedIn was always designed for desktop. When it came out, it was, well, Twitter always kind of had this sort of like quick mobile feel and it was yeah. natural. Text to go messaging. To mobile. Text yeah. messaging, yeah. yeah. Um, LinkedIn was always like job searching, posting your resume, uh, connecting with groups. Things that required you sitting down and typing out uh, a message or a conversation or posting your resume, and it always, even to me now, I still feel like if I'm going to use LinkedIn, I'm on my, I'm on my laptop here. Yeah. I, I have the LinkedIn app. I use it every once in a while. It's a great app, but I don't feel like I'm actually going to do anything like search for a job or uh, whatever it might be. Uh, there would be no reason for me to do that on mobile because it's mm -hmm. more powerful on desktop. That's what I. That's my yeah. sense that I get. So when creating messaging for any of the platforms, and let's take LinkedIn out because they're kind of the anomaly across social media yeah. platforms. When creating messaging, how does that change how you create a message? Realizing that anywhere from sixty-eight percent to ninety-nine, one hundred percent of your people are going to be interacting with it on a device that's somewhere between two and a half and four and a half inches. Yeah, absolutely. How does that change it? Don't waste their time. Yeah, they're mobile. They're moving. They're doing it quick. Uh, they're probably flipping through their news feed. you got to do something that catches attention, and they can read and understand your message very quickly. Some of our clients at, at Paper Media are really, really uh, Facebook heavy. A couple of them just really are really, really popular on Facebook, but they post these long status updates sometimes, um, and that's exactly what they want, and we try to encourage them to, to shorten it, and we do shorten it sometimes, but they're still long. Yeah. Someone flipping through their mobile device isn't going to want to see a chunk of text. They're just going to completely ignore it. So it needs to be almost Twitter-esque on any platform. Yeah. A short blip, get their attention, use an image that's going to capture attention, and try to get someone to click on it or to interact with it. It's just it's just so fast. It has to be designed yeah. for that. And I was noticing this Comscore didn't link P Pinterest. Because one of the things that as use case mm -hmm. I was thinking about is make sure your images look okay at two and a half to three and a half inches. Yeah. Um, and like Pinterest doesn't do well. Uh, they have a great app, and I actually use it sometimes in their app. But when I go to an infographic, it doesn't grab my attention as much on the mobile because mm -hmm. I can't read the little text without zooming in, pinch to, you know, yeah, and, and all absolutely. that. And so certainly when posting something to Facebook, posting something, make sure that image shows all right at two and a half inches. Yeah. And if you have small text on there, it's not going to grab someone's attention. Mm -hmm. They're going to realize, oh, there's a picture, there's some words there. And the question is, and are they going to take their time to zoom in and see what it says? So you have to think through that when mm -hmm. creating your communications because visual is extremely important. We talk about that all the time. And what they're looking at is... You know, and I'm going to assume when they talk mobile, they may be looking at their iPads, which gets you up to 10 inches. But yeah. at the, a huge percentage is right at the size, guys. Yeah. And what I see here, it, it's going to be small. Yep. So make sure, um, don't overwhelm people with like huge text on an image. That's not what we're saying. Don't hear us saying that. Right. You know, but make, just give it, give it that extra second and think through it that way. Well, how is this going to look on my smartphone? Even just if you saw it yourself, would it capture your own attention? Yeah. Um, and try to be objective about it. And but if you have questions, send man, it to yeah, send it to yourself somehow so yeah. you can see it. Yeah. Um, 
So when you post something, and I do most of my posting through my laptop because I have the benefit of having it and simple and it's easier. And you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. it's, you know, I, I did a hundred tweets for Salt Shows last week. I did yeah. all the, I, I'm a much faster typer on my full keyboard. Now, right. if I've been posting any pictures, I better make sure I go back and look and see how it looks on my, on my small mobile device. Yeah, because absolutely. I, I just need to think about that. Now, total right turn. Okay. Um, Yahoo and Yelp. Mm -hmm. So Another they announced they announced a few months ago that Yahoo was going to be working with Yelp and Yelp was going to be helping them uh, that, with their search. Something uh, Wall Street Journal article is telling us that a lot of small businesses don't like what's happening to them. More or less, all of the Yahoo reviews disappeared. Is kind of what we're getting here. Just overnight, they're just gone. I don't, I don't, gone. Literally, yeah. like you could have had this one had like 50 Yahoo reviews that were positive. This guy had a pun bunch of really good reviews, and now they're gone. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're replaced with Yelp reviews that maybe aren't as good. And, and this is where the struggle of any business, and this is true for you as a business is when you try, is the difference between user, who's your customer? User experience, which Yahoo, their ultimate customer is you and I just going there and trying to search for something mm -hmm. or using them for Yahoo News and their ad revenue and things like that. Right. But at the same time, the customer is the small business that happens to be being found on that. Yep. And they weren't paying you anything, but you tick them off a little bit. And I don't yeah. know, we don't know the end of the story here because this is just happening, but you have to think through both sides. And there was probably some ways to work with that. Uh, you know, my first thing was why all those Yahoo reviews that have been there for years, couldn't they have somehow been grandfathered into Yelp somehow yeah. or something like I'm that? Sure. Instead of suddenly waking up one morning and you've been found on Yahoo for years and your reviews are gone. Right. That's not a good, that's not good for your customer service. Not at all. And it's not good for, and it's not good for your brand. I mean, the big thing for that that kind of frustrates me. It just kind of came to me now is that well, who is Yahoo to be able to mess with your brand? Yeah, because for me, as a first time, if I was going to Yahoo, I don't use Yahoo all that often. Mm -hmm. But if I was going to Yahoo and going to use Yahoo Search, and it was you know, and there are millions of people doing that every day. I think Yelp is a great partner because I like Yelp a lot. Mm -hmm. I use their mobile app whenever I'm traveling. It's a great use, and it was good idea to partner with mm -hmm. them. But then think through all the logistics at the end yeah. and don't jump. If you've been collecting reviews for literally years and some of these people are 50, 100 reviews that mm -hmm. are positive, that are yeah. building their brand that, and they're not as strong and connected on Yelp and suddenly you just took that away from them, I, I, it makes no sense to me. Someone yeah. didn't think through that. Yeah. Um, the, the story's not done. We'll probably follow this a little more. I, I was really high on Yahoo and Yelp working together. I thought it was a great value add. It's something Google doesn't have. Google yeah. has their own re reviews process. They used to promote more Yelp, but Yelp obviously has stayed. No one's been able to buy Yelp. Yes. Google's tried. Others have tried. <laughs> um, Yelp's staying as their own business right now. The partnership to Yahoo makes sense. That connects them to Bing and, Yah and mm -hmm. Microsoft. Big mess up when you when you're yeah. a small business. So um, good, if you're a small a business move. affected, I'd love to hear someone. Yeah. who we haven't I have a personal connection. We're just reading the Wall Street Journal article, but I'd love to hear someone who has found a lot of business through mm -hmm. Yahoo, and this may have affected. So we'd love to hear your use case. Kind of contact us and interact with us. We'd love to know that. Yeah, let us know uh, how it's affected you positively or negatively, and uh, we might even talk about it on the show. Yeah. So the next article, uh, just a best practices article. Yeah. Something that. Um, we always want to try to bring you, even with our stories that we that we talk about, we want there to be something useful for you through every story uh, that you can use as soon as you're done watching the show for your small business. Um, this one is Social Media Examiner, one of our favorite sources, one of my personal favorite sources at least, and I think it yep. is yours too. This is uh, research that shows which social networks are ideal for which marketers, which businesses. Right. Um, why don't you pick one or two and then I'll clean it up. Yeah. I think the one that sticks out to me is the first one. People spend more time on visual networks. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we said. Tumblr, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, they're all becoming more and more visual in thinking about your imagery, what you're doing, how, you know, what pictures you're going to do, how are you going to picture that's so important. And that's yeah. just the best practice. My big one, uh, B2B marketers are most successful on LinkedIn. That's one that I'm not going to talk about a lot, but that's one that I think if you are a B2B business, hear that one, read this article, check it out because that's really useful for you. But I'm going to talk about Google Plus the most because <laughs> that's what I always want to talk yeah. about. First of all, it's great for businesses. There's tons of potential. Get there before your customers do now, you know. But this article is saying Google is best for SEO, and you just can't argue with that. Um, when you post something on Google Plus, those posts can come up in search results for right. someone looking for something like what you offer. That in itself is enough reason to post on Google Plus at least daily. Right. And you know, join groups and interact with people and try to 
Um, don't just don't just advertise on Google Plus. Don't hear me saying, oh, you know, we can post whatever we want because it's going to come up in search, search results. Still actually use it as a social network, but boy, that is a powerful, powerful aspect of that social media network. If you want to boost those search engine rankings, Google Plus is connected to Google. It just is, we say it all the time. It just seems obvious, yeah. you know? So get on there, learn it, use it. It's a great tool. Uh, there's tons of great features on it too um, that you might be yeah. able to find useful, like Hangouts and messaging yeah. and all that. And this article references a study done by Social Bakers where they mm -hmm. said, they went to people and brands in 2014, are you gonna spend no priority on something versus high priority? And uh, in this case, the high priority, obviously Facebook, 81% mm -hmm. of brands said, hey, we're gonna spend high priority and only 0.9% we're gonna spend no priority, which is not surprising. Right. The struggle on Google Plus is when they went to this, 22.8% said, we're not gonna spend no priority, no mm -hmm. time, no effort in Google Plus. And that's, I think when it comes to these main large social media, I, I can't think of any use case in any business that shouldn't at least have a presence on Google+. Yeah. Plus. And it's only 14% that said it's going to be high priority. That's not surprising to me. It's at 22% said we're not going to give it any priority. Yeah. Uh, and that's, you know, one out of five businesses, you, you, that's not, not good. Right, don't not good that. at all. Yeah, please don't do that. Uh, even if you only post once or twice a week, just make sure that there's some effort made there. Don't just completely give it no priority at all. Yeah. Absolutely. Now we're going to finish up we, with our infographic of the week. Before we get there, <laughs> I wanted to throw two videos out there. And we'll let JT roll. We've watched these ahead of time. We'll let JT roll little clips of them in and then put the link and you can watch the whole videos. If you're offended by language, one of them has a little bit of language. But two videos here. We watched both yeah. of them ahead of time. I'd like to response. The first, you know, we just praised Social Media Examiner. But they do an annual conference. They just did it last a month in March just a few weeks ago. And uh, Valley Wag, the Gawker website that does a lot of social media gossip and tech gossip, things like that, uh, they posted a video of one of the opening songs that was done. And they were basically mocking it. We'll post a link to that article. Yeah. This video, it grabbed me wrong. And what it, my first thought was, don't do this to social media. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just, <laughs> it gave, I think that the old song, you give love a bad name. Mm -hmm. I felt like it gave social media a bad name. Yeah, and absolutely. It, this was a conference where you paid $1,300 to go to. It just, it was awkward. I yeah. mean, watching the video, sitting here, I wasn't even live in the audience. I'm sitting here watching the video and I feel really bad for the person singing and for all the people listening. And just the whole situation just was, I mean, if I felt awkward watching a video, you know it was an awkward situation. Yeah. And you see other conferences and things like this open with like a band, like even something like a Apple or a Google I.O. Now they're yeah. bigger and it's more of a big deal, but they always have like what, like Coldplay or, you know, yeah, someone showing up. Yeah, they have brands show, or bands video. They do, a lot of times it's a video and yeah. sometimes it's a video. Something and big but and this, capturing attention. This was like, you just spent, a lot of people spent a lot of money to be there. And the conference looked great. I wish I was there. I wasn't able to be there this year. Um, I've actually never been there, but some, in some years I wouldn't mind going. It's something mm -hmm. I've mentioned that would be a good conference to go through. There's lots of good social media mm -hmm. conferences out there. But this was, uh, uh, yeah, Gawker had a reason, to, you know, Valley Wake had a reason to make fun of this. And <laughs> if you're going to spend some time and write a song, don't just, yeah, it just was poor presentation. The yeah. ideas were kind of, it was just cheesy. Yeah. Uh, a, this is a professional interest. We, mm -hmm. Sometimes we think of social media as, oh, you're just on the social media team. No. Yes. You know what? Social media is a major marketing tool. In fact, to me, if I was going to take my best person and I have a team, I'm not going to put them on advertising in magazines. I'm not going to put them in print. I'm not going to put them on television ads. I'm going to make sure that the best people with the best minds, with the best analytics are going to social media because yeah. that's the biggest ROI you're going to get and you're going to make a huge return on that. And let's not you know, water it down by putting out bad content talking about social media. Yeah. And so Social Media Explorer, you do a great job. We love your blog. We mention it all the time on this show. But don't. I don't, even, I don't know. Even, I wasn't at the conference. Please all I see is with Gawker. That. Maybe there's Please more story there. So I'm going to say, I don't know the whole story. But the four minutes was painful. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're looking for a kind of a comical, uh, like you're laughing because you feel bad, kind of video, um, yeah. definitely watch it. Uh, at least watch the first couple minutes. Yeah. Um, but boy, oh boy. Yeah, watch that video. And then watch the second video. This video's been out here for a little while and I hadn't seen it before. I'm not a huge, I don't watch a lot of comics. Mm -hmm. And this video specifically, apparently is from an HBO special. It's on YouTube, it's got a couple million views. Uh, but I saw this clip and it, it's Louis C.K. talking about Facebook. Mm -hmm. Watch the clip. 
JT will put this right up here. Yep. We won't roll this one on because I think there's some copyright issues. We'll let YouTube deal with that, but we'll put the link there so you can mm -hmm. find it. And he's talking more about sometimes we have to, get, he, he specifically talks, take the phone out of your face and talk to people, mm -hmm. interact. Don't do everything for Facebook. And this is a, as a social media show, we spend time on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Yelp and we get all this <laughs> stuff. But the realization is that's not all of marketing. That's not all social media. Social media sometimes is actually elbow to elbow, shoulder yep. to shoulder, us interacting with people. And the best sales, the best marketing still is if we can be person to person. Now, social media adds so many more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Inbound marketing, all of this. Yeah. Huge opportunities. Do it. But... Be real people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we don't do this show by ourselves. Right. You know, this is a social media show, and one of us could probably sit here, talk to a camera about all these social media things, but we have an interaction. We have some communication, and we want to have the same with you guys out there, too. It is. It's, it's get the phone out of your face and quit recording what you're, uh, what, what, is, what does he say? <laughs> quit saying, recording quit your something son. you're never going to see right, again, and you just want <laughs> somebody to comment on. You right, know, like, exactly. uh, You know, get the phone out of your face. And I love it. He says, the, this, the person's actually a great, what is it? They have a great pixel, pixel ratio or something. I forget yeah. how he says it, but hey, they're real. They, you can t reach out and touch them. You don't have to look through them <laughs> right. your three-inch screen or your iPad where you're like putting it up. And I think about that. You don't have to communicate people always through Twitter, always through Facebook. If you have the opportunity to go meet with someone, mm -hmm. then go do that. This yeah. morning, I had I needed to talk to someone here in our office, and I thought about you know they're three doors down from my office, you know mm -hmm. a whole like twenty feet, and I I almost <laughs> sent them an email. And then I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to stand up. And I walked down to Jeff's office and I sat down and I asked him the questions I wanted to do. Yeah. And I was like, you know, sometimes I need a document, but it was also, we ended up talking 30 minutes, talked about several of our clients, got lots of things done. And sometimes you just need to go meet with people, talk with people, interact with people. You know, we're still physical. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and we have, like you like said, we have, we're, we're in HD. You can see us in HD, you know, right here. We, our eyes are a lot better than our little piddly wink cameras in our phone. Just a really, it's just a kind of a comical thought, you know? Yeah. Yes, Facebook's great. And yes, you want to share your life with people. And yes, you want to um, kind of build those connections on social. But don't forget that it, social media is an extension of word of mouth. It's an extension of relationships um, and a way to stay connected with people who maybe you aren't with all the time. But, but there's no reason to take a picture of everything that happens around you and post it to Facebook. Yeah. You know, like, use, there's a balance there. Yeah. We, we can, I think social media, though, it's not all that new, and Facebook mm -hmm. just turned 10, and MySpace has been around, right? We've learned, but it's still, it's still got this, fret and it becomes this addictive personality yeah, type thing. And I am given to this, you know, that's why I don't have Facebook on my phone. I spend mm -hmm. too much time on it. Yep. And so I just took it off. That's just how I roll. Now, I still use Facebook, and mm -hmm. I actually have been signing on more to it um, on the computer, and I'm definitely interested in following the trends and the brands and trying to figure yeah. out use cases. But, you know, let's talk to people. Now, going back to how we end up every week. Every single show. Our infographic of the week. Dustin goes out and finds a great infographic, and this one... Kind of tie in a couple of your interests. Yeah, it ties in know, a couple content. of content. It, it's not golf this time. It's though. not golf this time. Believe it or not, this article is not about golf. Uh, it's it's called it's called content mixology, which I have kind of a passion for fine uh, finely crafted cocktails and craft beers and some of that stuff. And I'm really getting into that and learning. Uh, how it's made and why they're different and why they're unique. It's just really yeah. kind of an interesting Shout field. out to your, your wife is part yes. of a wonderful restaurant mm -hmm. here in our in our great town called Cerulean. Uh -huh. Cerulean uh, at Cerulean Life, I yep. believe. At Cerulean their... Life on Twitter and Instagram. So um, give them a little, little plug. Yeah, they're, they're, she's just teaching me a lot and I, I think it's really interesting. But really an interesting uh, in our infographic here, it starts off like mixing a drink, content marketing demands that marketers serve information in ways that are attractive to their audience. So you don't want to put a drink in front of somebody that's brown, probably. Yeah. You know, that's why there are all these blue and pink and purple or, you know, that has like the garnishes and everything. That's important. So you always want to have articles and content in front of people that they're actually going to find enticing yep. and, and beautiful. And we've talked about that image and, and driving images. It goes on to give us a bunch of stats about why businesses struggle with this. They can't seem to get people to engage. And I think that has a lot to do with the way it's um, presented. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of helping encourage you to learn a little bit more about your audience, what kind of things they want to see, and how you can present articles and content to them in a way that would be like if you sat a really nice cocktail in front of yeah. them. Yeah. Really interesting stuff here. Uh, big stat, the vast majority of prospects say that content targeted to their specific industry is more valuable. Value is exactly what brands need to offer to move users through the sales funnel, right? Yeah. That's inbound marketing 101. 
get something out there people want to see because they're going to be more likely to interact with it. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. And I think this quote by Marketing Profs uh, at Marketing Profs on Twitter, content curation is the act of continually identifying, selecting, and sharing the best and most relevant content and other resources on a specific subject to match the needs of specific audience. And that's that's all what we're trying to do is give, give, give. And that's what we're in form is. That's, yeah. you, know, I, you know, we go through and we probably read, uh, we should count sometime, probably read 100 <laughs> articles in a week. And we choose our top five to seven, yeah. ten, depending on the week. Uh, we're trying to content curate for you. We're trying to give you the best information. We're trying to help you. And if your brand is given, if you're a cocktail, if you're a wine company, or yeah. if you're a restaurant, it's helping people see the breadth of information and then giving them the best of the best. Yeah. And I think this is part of what it is. They do some great little, I like the case studies at the bottom. Yeah, really nice case studies. Um, it's a good, good infographic. And Thank I like, you. And I, it's, a, I, it's a little different, a little mixology, a little, you know, shake it up a little bit. Yeah, bring something on the show. Maybe next time we'll have a little cocktail while we drink. It's a yeah. little, usually a little too early <laughs> yeah, in the morning Yeah, we do, we do this in the morning, but I we have our, our <laughs> coffee. Mine's empty, so we need to get going so I can get in our cup. Now, uh, each week we say, we want you to interact with us. And um, please do. Yeah. If you've watched this, take 30 seconds. And one, JT, put our email address up here. You know, Ooh. because we never talk about maybe That's you true. don't have Twitter and Facebook yet and we need to convince you. So email us. Yeah, absolutely. We're not gonna, I'm not going to give you my personal phone number quite yet. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and I don't even know. Mine's nmanahan at papromedia.com. And D, mine's dhickle at papromedia.com. Yeah. Um, you know, JT's, you, you can email us. You can get up to us at Twitter at yep. nkmanahan. At Dustin Hickle. Uh, you can follow us at papromedia. That's the company we work for, the parent company that does mm -hmm. all this. Uh, at Paypro Media. Yep. You can follow at Salcha. You can go to Salcha on Facebook, facebook.com slash Salcha. You can follow us on Instagram. You can do all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. But make a comment, interact, us, say, yeah. hey, I watched the Informe show and I thought this part was the best and this part, you know what? Cut this out. Yeah. You guys babble on too long even about how to interact <laughs> with us. Um, and we're trying to figure that out. We want to know what you want yeah. us to talk about. Absolutely. And we would love to know if we talk about a story and you have a comment about it, interact with us. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to find all these stories, we have a new way for you to do that. We announced this last week. Each week, I'm taking all these stories, I'm putting them in a flip board, mm -hmm. and we'll link that up here, the flip IT short code that you can find up, and you can find that link. We'll uh, pr try to remember to go to YouTube and make it linkable so you can go right to, <laughs> yeah. to it. Uh, we also, every time in the comment section on our YouTube section, you can find the bit.ly links in a bit.ly bundle, so you have yep. quick links of all the stories. Uh, we want to make these stories extremely accessible to you. Thank you to all the creators and the content creators yeah. that were reading. You know, Social Media Examiner, um, Mashable this week. Uh, what else did we do this Wall week? Street Journal, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. Times. We're, we're commenting and curating other people's great work. Make sure you go and read it, comment mm -hmm. there too, and then tell us what you think about what we're doing here on Informing. Yeah, absolutely. And keep watching because we'll probably do uh, a ton of new things, a ton of different ideas. We've got some fun things that we might do coming down the yeah. pipeline here. Um, and we're always excited to bring you the show every single week. Yep. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you will have a great week, and we'll see you next time.